Hey Astro Kids and welcome back and this is my interpretation of what it looks like to have your natal moon in the Noxatra of Jeshta. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. So before we get into this we first have to understand the natal moon and then we have to break down this Noxatra of Jeshta. And just a quick disclaimer that this is not according to Western Tropical Astrology. This will be according to Vedic Astrology, which is using the Sidereal Zodiac. So if you're not familiar with what your Sidereal Moon Sign is, there is a link to a calculator down below in the description so that you have the correct information. The moon is one of the most important grahas in Vedic astrology. The moon is representing your mind. Therefore, the moon represents everything that is happening within your life. The moon is a reflector. It is a projector. Everything that is in your mind becomes a manifestation within your physical reality. In the same way, you are perceiving everything that is happening within your reality. So the moon is projecting what is in your mind and is reflecting everything within your reality. The moon represents your body, your health, your vitality, how you are interacting with others. When people are coming across you and you are making connections, this is the personality that is coming forward. The moon represents your social standings, how you fit into society, how you're able to adapt and relate to others. The moon is also popularity and beauty. The moon is representing the mother, your connection to your mother, what kind of nurturing you need emotionally, what is making you feel emotionally satisfied. The moon is also representing all of the fluid in your body. So it is connected to your water intake. It is connected to your nourishment, all of your needs that need to be met. The moon is a very personal planet that has to do with your emotions, how you react, and how you are responding to situations around you. So, Jaishta is found from 16 degrees, 40 minutes, till 30 degrees of Scorpio. So, this is trailing to the end of Scorpio, and this is a very important Noxatra because this tail end of this Noxatra is falling within a Gandanta zone. So the Gandanta point is a karmic knot that occurs between the water signs and the fire signs. So in the last three degrees, 20 minutes of Scorpio into the first three degrees, 20 minutes of Sagittarius is a very intense karmic zone where there are intense changes that are occurring. And this is the end of this second part of our journey through the Noxatras. So Jeshta is ending out this Tamasa zone that is focused on the material world, focused on our status, on our desires, and we're shifting now as we go into Sagittarius into the Sadvik zone, which is all to do with our spiritual journey. So this is a very prominent transformation point occurring here in the Naksatra of Jeshta. Jeshta means the eldest or the chief. It is the chief star and this is related to the eldest sister. So Jeshta is actually one of the wives of the moon. All 27 of these Naksatras are wives of the moon if you go back to the mythology behind this. And so this was the eldest one. And this was known as the eldest one because this was the Noxatra that told on the moon when the moon was giving too much attention to Rohini. So this Noxatra has to do with policing. It has to do with justice. Standing up for something, defending something is something that is very prominent about this Jeshta Noxatra. Jeshta is symbolized by a circular talisman, which is representing protection, magic, and miracles. And so this is a Noxatra that is associated with occult powers, with mystical powers. And this, of course, is in the sign of Scorpio, which is our original eighth house within our natal chart. And the eighth house has everything to do with deep occult mysteries of the unknown, of the esoteric, of the metaphysical, of the things that are hidden deep below the surface. So Scorpio has everything to do with digging up the truth, digging up the deep information, dealing with hidden information. So this is very prominent here in this Jeshtanak Satcher, where these are individuals who are truth seekers. They are looking to get to the truth, to get down to the bottom of everything.
These are very inquisitive individuals, often asking a lot of questions, often sussing out the truth, able to uncover the things that are hidden, able to see through lies and illusions very easily. These are very penetrating people. They can come across as very intense and intimidating in their ability to suss out the truth and to figure out when others are lying, when others are deceiving them very easily. Jeshta is incredibly powerful. This is said to have the power to rise, conquer, and to gain the courage in battle. So these are people who are possessing a ton of willpower, strength, determination. These are people who are very purposeful. And this is an Artha Naksatra. The primary aim of this Naksatra is Artha. So these are people who have a purpose, who have a mission in life. And often there is a connection with status. Not always, but this is a Naksatra that is seeking some sort of power. It wants to be in control, to be in a position of leadership. So these are people who often are very status conscious. They are people who like to be in the most powerful position, who like to be playing the dominating role. And this can play out in the career or it can play out in other areas of life, such as being the dominating partner within a relationship or being the leader, the parent, the oldest one within a family. These are people who like to take on these big roles of responsibility to protect others, to care for others, and to be that dominant person within their connections. Those who are born under Jeshta also on the negative side of this can have insecurities around their dominance. So there's a lot of this need to overpower, to take charge, to be in leadership, but there also can be some insecurities around feeling that they don't possess enough strength, enough courage. And this is something where these are individuals who need to deal with their insecurities because they actually are possessing a ton of courage and strength if they are willing to believe in themselves. So these are people who can struggle with some issues on the lower end, which are very scorpionic. Again, Scorpio is a fixed water sign. A lot of deep, intense emotion that's occurring here in this Jeshtanak Satcher, where there can be issues of betrayal, of abandonment, of jealousy occurring within this Nak Satcher. And these are individuals who can become very angry, very infuriated, very jealous. But oftentimes the jealousy is actually coming from others. So these are people who can be very powerful, very dominating, and others can be jealous of the status or of the power that they possess. These are people who also can go through very tumultuous situations. Again, Scorpio is related back to that eighth house of our natal chart, which has to do with scandals, secrets, with all sorts of intense experiences, transformative experiences, things that are very unstable, very deep, very intense, these ups and down moments within life. So these are people who can go through some very intense experiences of abandonment of people who are betraying them, people who are taking advantage of them. And going through these experiences, there can be some sort of low self-esteem or insecurities that are related to this. These are people who often can come across as very arrogant, very immature, very egocentric at a younger age. But as they get older, they begin to learn how to stabilize all of this intense energy that they possess. And they often become very wise and experienced throughout their life where they actually become the individuals who possess the wisdom, the knowledge, the people who are out to defend, to help, to protect those who they care for. So they often rise to this position where they are in a position of being the eldest, being the one who is in charge. These are people who can have a soft spot in their heart for the underdog, for the underprivileged, for those in poverty. They're always wanting to help, wanting to protect, wanting to make sure that others have what they need. These are people who often are possessing this mystical power in terms of being manifestors. These are people who can manifest things very easily. And so there is a need to pay attention to how your thoughts and feelings are corresponding to what you are trying to bring into your life. There is a tendency on the negative side to focus too much on the negatives, on the darker aspects of life. Again, we're here in Scorpio where this is all about the darkness, this eighth house, the things that are hidden in the dark, the things that are very intense. And so 
when focusing on these negative aspects, there is a tendency to manifest negative situations into your life. So you have to be very careful about how you are putting your thoughts and feelings out into the universe. This is definitely a Noxatra that needs a ton of positivity of motivation. These are people who are often drawn to things that are positive. I've seen a lot of people who are born under this Naksatra of Jeshta who are drawn to motivational speakers, drawn to crystals, to healing, to all sorts of things that are related to positivity, to energy, to vibration. So again, a very mystical Naksatra. And sometimes these are people who can even have interests in the occult, but are not outward about these interests. They're very much keeping these interests in the mystical, the metaphysical hidden away. These are people who can have a deep interest in psychology. Again, they have a skill of being able to detect when others are lying, being able to examine human behavior very easily. These are people who often can become aggressive or impatient at times. We talked about how in the last Naksatra of Anuradha, this Scorpio energy is super intense, super tumultuous. This is a ton of emotion that is occurring here. But in the Anuradha Naksatra, that was a Saturn-ruled Naksatra, where there was more stability that was present there, where those individuals were more patient, were more about being calculated and disciplined. This is a Mercury-ruled Naksatra, and Mercury is a very changeable, very restless energy. And we're also here in Scorpio, where there's all of this intense transformation that's occurring. So there's a ton of movement that is happening within this Naksatra, a ton of energy intensity that is occurring here where these are individuals who can have very intense emotion, very deep passion, a lot of energy that is very difficult to stabilize. And so these are people who often are coming into lessons of extremes, of a need to control their impulses, to control all of this intense energy that they possess. And this is an oxatra that can come into extremes with the physical and the spiritual. There's a tendency to lean one way or the other, to either go totally into the spiritual or totally into the material aspects of life. And there's a need to find balance between those two extremes. These are people who are able to overcome obstacles very easily. Again, very strong, very powerful people who are born under this Jeshta Naksatra. Jeshta is ruled over by Indra, which is the chief of the gods. This is the god of thunder. This is the conqueror of the demons. This is representing the power, the strength, the courage that is found here in Jeshta. These are very heroic people. They are all about saving the day, being in this position of honor, of being respected, of being famous, of being known for their greatness. They are all about being in that higher position. These are people who are all about experience. They are all about learning through the lessons of life. They're very adventurous people, explorers. Again, we're here in Scorpio where this is about diving into the mysteries, diving into the unknown areas of life. So these are people who can have an interest in travel, who can have an interest in learning, who are very much about diving deeper, very inquisitive people who are looking to decode the mysteries, looking to go deep below the surface and to understand everything at a deeper level. These are people who can possess a ton of wisdom and knowledge. There is a seniority energy that is associated with this. We talked about this in the previous Naksatra of Anuradha, how the sign of Scorpio is associated with this elderly energy of this old soul energy of possessing this deep, deep wisdom, this profound insight. And this Jaysta Naksatra is associated with the star Antares, which is in the heart of the scorpion. And this is a star that actually means the rival of Mars. This is a star that often is mistaken for the planet of Mars. It's a very bright red star that is very similar to the way that Mars appears. And it is a star that's associated with war, aggression, violence, dominance. So again, we see all of these strong and courageous qualities that are found here in Jeshta.
So Jage the people sometimes, again, can come across as very arrogant, as very dominating. There can be a tendency to just speak their mind, to just say the truth exactly as it is. And this can get them into trouble. These are people who can be perceived as very toxic, as very intimidating, very aggressive people, where they are saying things that are hurting others very deeply. So this is a Noxatra, again, that has a strong need for self self-control to contain all of this energy all of this emotion that they possess there's a deep deep passion that is found here within this Noxatra. these are people who are very willful there's a need sometimes to choose your battles wisely these are people who can have a tendency to not back down even in situations where they should be taking a back seat and so there is a need here for clarity to take that time to evaluate a situation before just jumping in and conquering. These are people who need to take some time to gain some wisdom, gain some understanding about the situations that they're involved in. There can be an overconfidence and arrogance and ego about this Noxatra. Again, we talked about that in our last Scorpio Noxatra, how Scorpio can have this tendency to become very egocentric, very dominating, very dogmatic, very overpowering. These are people who often become advocates for standing up for those who are overindulging, those who are abusing and the senses and the pleasures and so these are people who often are calling out others for their addictions or ill habits and this is associated also with them where those who are born under jeshta also can have a tendency to become overindulgent to become impulsive to become overtaken by their deep passion and desires these are people who can be highly sexual this scorpio energy again is associated with the eighth house which is all about sexuality all about deep intimate connections all about the passion the intensity so these are people who possess extreme intensity they can come across as very seductive people as those who are very sexual who can lean towards promiscuity so this is a noxatra again that needs to find balance that needs to be able to temper these deep impulses and desires these are people though who can make excellent leaders their dominating presence allows them to rise to these higher positions where they're able to claim authority they often are associated with fame and honors, people who can achieve great feats in life, who can attract wealth and fame into their life. And this is especially true when the moon is falling under this Noxatra, where there is a ability to manifest things very easily. Again, the moon is related to the mind. Now, we also have to keep in mind, again, that the moon is debilitated in Scorpio. So this is where the moon falls. And this is happening because of all of this deep passion and intensity that is found within Scorpio. The moon feels very unstable, very insecure here in the sign of Scorpio. So again, there's a need to stabilize these energies to find some kind of stability here with all of this intensity. These are people who are very supportive of their loved ones, especially, again, very protective people. They love to stand up for those who they're close to, to make sure that everyone is well fed, well taken care of. They are advocates for this. They also can be very complex people, very difficult to understand at times. They can come across as very brash in their actions, but they also can have a very soft and sweet heart that is hidden behind all of this intensity. And so these are people who often are very much apologetic, very sincere about what they have done through these brash actions. They often regret their actions later on. They can have this sweeter, softer side to them that is often well hidden away. And so there can be a difficulty in actually understanding these people in the way that they come across with others. They can be very eccentric, very talented, very creative. And this is especially true in the fourth quarter, which we'll talk about at the end of this video when we get more into those four quarters of Jeshta. But especially in this energy, it's very creative, very imaginative. These are very deep individuals. And so they can have creative talents, but often their creativity leans towards a very eccentric side where they can express very dark, intense art.
These are people who are drawn to things, again, that are supernatural, that are mystical, that are otherworldly. These are people who are all into the occult, into the mystical areas of life. These are people who are all about consciousness. They want to be able to see things clearly, to know the truth. But sometimes they are jaded in seeing things in a way that is distorted, where they are actually seeing from their ego, seeing from their arrogance. So there is a need to, again, take that time to sit with situations, to fully understand it before just jumping into it. These are people who often are very secretive. So even though they they are very much expressive and dominating in their personality through this deep, intense passion and emotion. They are also re very reclusive people, very private people. They love to spend time by themselves. And again, they are drawn to these spiritual practices where they are able to dissect a ton of deep wisdom. These are people who can come off as very argumentative as adversaries, enemies towards others. They are very much about creating conflict, creating chaos by bringing up the truth, by holding people to the truth. And so these are people who often are going to contradict others, who are often going to speak out against others. On the side of passions and desires, this is a Naksatra that often is drawn to drinking, partying, and sexuality. So again, these are all areas where this Naksatra needs to find the discipline. It needs to be able to understand how to indulge in the pleasures of life in a healthy way and to not overdo it. We talked about in our previous Naksatra how Scorpio is a sign that often is drawn to excessiveness with these deep, intense passions and emotions. These are people who can easily go overboard, who can become very excessive. And this Scorpio sign is all about containing those emotions, being able to deal with those emotions in a healthy way. These are people who also can do very well in business. Remember that Mercury, which is the ruler of this Naksatra, is associated with communication, sales, entrepreneurship, all sorts of skills and intelligence that we develop dealing with the practical areas of life. So these are people who are often very skilled in business, who can do very well in the area of business. So this is again associated with this Naksatra. These are people who, again, can get easily disturbed, easily provoked in situations where they become very reactive and they can become very vengeful due to this. There can be a vengeful side to this Naksatra of wanting to get back at those who have attacked them. These are people who hold themselves to a very high standard and can be very proud and egocentric, very much about being this policeman again, taking charge of situations. These are people who oftentimes can be very confused in their actions with this turbulent emotion, acting on emotion first before actually fully thinking out the situation. Another symbol of this Naksatra is an umbrella, which again is associated with protection. The umbrella shields us from the rain. So this is associated with the protective qualities of this Naksatra. These are people who not only can be protective though, but they also can be protected by others. These are people who also are, again, all about their status, all about their dignity. These are people who want to be seen in a positive light. And so another symbol that goes along with this circular talisman is an earring, which was a symbol of superiority in the olden days. So these are people who are all about this superiority, about being in charge, being at the top, being respected, being liked by others, very important to those who are born under Jeshta. So each Naksatra can be divided up into four quarters or four paras. So we can take this 13 degree 20 minute Naksatra and break it up into four 3 degree 20 minute sections. And the first will be from 16 degrees 40 minutes 
till 20 degrees of Scorpio. This is falling under a Sagittarius Navamsa. And those who are born under this first quarter are very cheerful, very happy people. They are very humorous individuals, very easy people to be around. And they are extremely caring, generous, protective. They are all about helping others, all about doing what's right. And they have a love for exploring, for learning. These are people who are interested in deep philosophy. There can be some difficulties around finances. There can be a lot of ups and downs in the finances, which can bring about a lot of worry in this next satra. Those who are born under the second quarter are born under a Capricorn Navamsa. This will be from 20 degrees till 23 degrees, 20 minutes of Scorpio. And these are people who are highly responsible, who are very moral, who hold themselves to a very high standard. They hold themselves to accountability. These are people who are very active, who are very confident, very independent. They take charge and complete tasks. And they often have a very authoritative way of speaking and communicating with others. They also can sometimes swing towards depression. So there can be times of melancholy along with these other moments of confidence and courage. Those who are born under the third quarter are born under an Aquarius Navamsa. This is from 23 degrees 20 minutes till 26 degrees 40 minutes of Scorpio. And these are people who are very service oriented, who want to help, and especially are about helping the underdog, helping the underprivileged, helping those who are without. These are people who can have a motherly sense of protection about them, where they are all about caring for others, teaching others, supporting others. They also can be very scientific. They can make excellent researchers. They can have a deep interest in the mystical and occult subjects. Those who are born under the fourth quarter are falling under a Pisces Navamsa. This will be from 26 degrees, 40 minutes, all the way until 30 degrees of Scorpio. So again, this is the Gandanta point. This is the very intense zone of this Naksatra, where we are transitioning now from the end of Jeshta into Mula. And so this is a very spiritual Naksatra. This is where we see the huge transition of moving over into our Sadvic Naksatras as we get into Sagittarius. And so these are people who are highly interested in the spiritual and mystical subjects. These are people who also are all about doing what's right. They are all about protecting others, being responsible. They are very much about caring for others, very deeply emotional individuals. However, their deep emotions can draw them towards addiction and excessiveness. On the negative side, there can be a lot of self-destructive behaviors that are found within this fourth quarter. These are people who also can be highly creative and talented. Again, strong artistry is found within this fourth quarter. These are people who are very imaginative. However, these are people who also can be very much drawn towards fantasy when it comes to romance. So these are people who can easily fall in love, fall into connections at first sight before actually taking the time to get to know others. There can be an impulsiveness that is found within this fourth quarter. These are people who need to use discernment before jumping into situations instead of using emotion when jumping into these situations. These are people who also can have issues around the father. Sometimes the father can go through difficulties here in this fourth quarter.